class 5 A and B. And last time we have done chapter number 7 that is internet services. And today for revision we, I have a surprise for you. And here we have Raymond sir to say about internet. Okay, my dear students, what is an internet? Okay, internet sometimes called as the net. It is a network in which a user of one computer can get the information from the other computer. Or we can talk directly or to the user at the other computer. Okay, it was conceived by the Advanced Research Project Agency of U.S. Government in 1969. Okay, today internet is public, cooperative and self-sustainable facility that is accessible to hundreds and millions of people around the world. In my previous class, I have talked about the introduction part and which Raymond has already done and we have learned about uses of internet and today I am going to start the new topic that is ways to connect to the internet. Ways to connect the internet. There are some basic requirements for accessing internet services on a computer system. These are modem which we can call modulator and demodulation. It is a device which is used for communication. It is a device which is used for communication. And the next one is we'll talk about ISP and it is a short form of internet service provider. Internet service provider. It is a company which provides internet facility to the user. Okay, and we'll be talking about communication line. A communication or telephone line is required for connecting the computer with the internet service provider. Some of the commonly used ways to connect with the internet are as follows. First one is dial-up connection. First one is dial-up connection. This is one of the traditional ways of connecting internet which is established by connecting line to a computer through modem. And the next one is broadband connection. Broadband connection. This is a high speed transmission technology which allows to use internet facility through different transmission mediums. The various methods of accessing broadband connections are as follows. That is digital subscriber line that is DSL. In this technology two separate wires are used to carry data to carry data and voice signals. So we can make calls while accessing the internet facility. And the next one is satellite connection. And I'm sure you have an idea about satellites. Okay, it's the satellite. It's a type of broadband connectivity. The data signals are directly sent to the user through satellites. Directly sent through satellite and the data is received at the user's end by a satellite dish. Okay? And the next one is wireless internet broadband. Wireless internet broadband services are similar to wired broadband in that 
they connect to an internet backbone usually a fiber optic truck however they don't use cables to the last mile or business residences instead they use wireless fidelity which we call wifi wireless fidelity that is wifi it is commonly known as wifi connections or radio waves and the next one is mobile cable tv internet this is one of a high speed internet access service which is provided through cable tv network a cable modem is used for accessing the internet facility through this medium okay and i'm sure you are getting a correct idea and the next one is mobile mobile internet mobile internet so all of us are used to and mobile internet it refers to access to the internet via cellular telephone service provider it refers to access to the internet via cellular telephone service provider a mobile broadband modem tethers the smartphone to one or more computers or other end user devices to provide access to the internet via the protocols and i am sure you know about the protocols which i have already talked in my previous class that cellular telephone service provides me offer this is a high speed broadband facility which uses 2g 3g and 4g broadband spectrum to transfer the data and when i am talking about 2g 3g and 4g 2g here means you see exactly this figure in your mobile 2g is second generation and 3g is third generation and 4g is fourth generation okay so we will be doing some of the widely used internet services and this we are going to do right now some of the widely used internet services are video conferencing chatting and internet telephony or voice over internet protocol in short we can also call VoIP and in your mobile you can see many applications such as Facebook YouTube WhatsApp so i am going to do video conferencing from whatsapp now i am about to call raymond sir says wait so here i am calling to raymond sir now it is ringing because yes so here raymond sir received my call so you can you see raymond sir here all right so this is called video conferencing and it is a system that allows face to face conversation just now you have seen that myself and raymond sir talking face to face we can converse face to face through video conferencing now we will be doing chatting so let me chat with raymond sir himself now so here i am going to write hi raymond sir hi sir stay safe yes now i am sending the message and message is already sent to raymond sir and he already received and this is called chatting we can chat with your friend or with your mommy or daddy or uncle or anyone in the world by chatting and here i am going to send the voice record okay so here i am going to say uh, hello raymond sir all right now i can show you that this is called voice over internet protocol 
that is also called voice messages can you see the message is already sent and received by mr raven before ending my class let me quickly talk about electronic mail which is also called email an electronic mail or email is an easy way of sending and receiving messages from one computer to another computer anywhere in the world it is one of the fastest modes of communication and i'll be doing rest of the topics that is advantages of email in my next class thank you stay